We're gonna tell us that we both got extended. So it's not. So it's not us. Unfortunately, not. Uh, I need right. to get in Jeffrey Springs friend group. Evidently, so. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that right now. Let's do that. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure you check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as all our traditional podcasting platforms. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, or email, or send us a voice memo to LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Yeah, uh, I think we need to become friends with Jeffrey Springs, as he is now $31 million richer and ultimately could be $66 million richer when it comes to the end of this uh, multi-year long-term contract extension that the Rays doled out to him. What a great character arc for Springs. No luck with the Texas Rangers. No luck with the Boston Red Sox. Gets traded to Tampa Bay. Has a pretty good 2021 season as a reliever. Then is taken out with a knee injury midseason. That's it. And then comes out in 2022 as what we called the biggest surprise in in, in the pitching side of things. I mean, the, the guy just dominated, uh, Kevin. And I know we did a player review uh, of him. So if you haven't checked that out, please, please go ahead and do so right now. But I'll just give you this. 135 and a third, 246 ERA, a FIP of 304, ERA of 134. 147, excuse me, 147, and then these two numbers that I love. Walk rate, 5.6. K rate, 26.2. Give this man his money. That's awesome. Yeah, not bad for a guy that was a 30th round draft pick, uh, which equates to 888th overall, was designated for assignment twice by the Texas Rangers, and then traded to Boston, then to, uh, was DFA'd by Boston as well. I mean, when the Rays got him, let's not forget that when the Rays traded Ronaldo Hernandez, catching prospect, to the Red Sox for Chris Mazza and Jeffrey Springs, we we're like, what the hell? We just gave yeah. up a great catching prospect for two dud pitchers. And Chris Mazza clearly has not panned out. But Jeffrey Springs, uh, again, it just uh, goes to the example of, of the Rays can turn around and mold and refine a pitcher and turn that guy into legitimacy, if not stardom. And that's what they've done. Like if you're a pitcher out there, left-handed, right-handed, ambidextrous, if you can only top out at 92 or 98, whatever it is, they can, they can find a pathway for you to be successful. And they've certainly been able to do that with Jeffrey Springs because again, he was – never a hot commodity it you know it's one thing to be like a tyler glass now like you just look at him yeah it's got the stuff the pirates <laughs> right. just can't you know if i mean the pirates like they're screwing him up but jeffrey springs is like i don't you know what do we really have here and and being able to work with him and and again he's not electrifying per se although you could argue that his changeup might be one of the best in baseball at least from a starting pitcher standpoint but the the balance and and just the the repertoire that he has and the ability to pinpoint his offerings and he's just a he's a, a throwback a pitcher if you will not just a flamethrower and a well-balanced uh pitch mix you were talking about that changeup which is Awesome. He throws it at 35%, but the other two, the slider at 25, the fastball at 40%. So like he's a very mm -hmm. balanced pitch mix kind of guy. So he's always like keeping um, hitters off balance. That's, that's so great. Like on their toes, they don't know what he, what he's going to, to throw And You're right. That changeup is, is just nasty. When you look at, at past videos of him in 2022, I mean, he, he was just ridiculous. So no, this is just a great character arc. I am so happy to, 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 to see money being spent we talked about this uh, uh uh last week with the arbitration cases he was one of the seven 
Uh, I believe he was asking for 3.5, and the team was mm -hmm. countering with 2.7. Obviously, that's no longer the case. He's going to get paid $4 million for this season. That's awesome. Uh, I think the breakdown is $4 million this season, then 5.3, 10.5, 10.5, and then either a $15 million option or a $750,000 buyout. So it must be a very happy Springs household uh, yeah. today. And additionally, he could, not saying he will do this, but there's ways and mechanisms for him to earn up to $20 million more with various escalator clauses tied to Cy Young award voting. So he could, again, max out at close to 66, 67 million, whatever it may be. We have more to discuss on the Jeffrey Springs contract extension, but first, we have to tell you about our new partner, FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here, and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. You've probably heard of them before. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. And guess what? New customers can join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed. That's when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Again, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. FanDuel has all of your favorite bets from the money line to uh, point spreads to player props. They have it all. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. All on an app that's safe, secure, and extremely easy to you so football fans uh it's that time of year you do not want to miss out place your first five dollar bet to get 150 dollars in free bets win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n so yeah jeffrey springs congratulations to him and i also think yes good for the raise on uh, opening their wallets and their purse strings. But it's also, I think, a very financially savvy move because, again, he was asking for $3.5 million in arbitration. The Rays are going to give him $4 million this year. Next year, you know, if he has another year like he does this past year, you know, that, that final year of arbitration could have gotten pretty pricey, but the Rays are only going to have to pay him $5.25 million. And then, uh, like you mentioned, Ulysses, 10 and a half mil in 2025 and 2026, which would be a, a bargain if he even comes close to the type of production that he's been able to to showcase thus far. And that's the thing. The Rays, they're they're backloading these these long term contract extensions. I mean, the Rays are kind of getting in the habit of of putting these deals together, whether it's with a Brandon Lau, whether it's with the Tyler Glass now, whether it's with the Manny Margot. Zach Eflin, who, of course, it was more free agent deal. But, um, you know, we, we look at the numbers and say, wow, the rate 31 million could be upwards of, you know, 66 million. There's there's always the opportunity for not to be a W downer, but the Rays can move off and trade a player when that player gets a little bit too pricey, but still very inexpensive for, you know, 22, 23 other markets out there. And you can go down the list. I know you stopped, but we can keep going. Mad Moore, Kevin Kiermeyer, James Shields, Carl Crawford, Ben Zobras, Devin Longoria. I mean, they, they've been used to this. It hasn't happened in a while. Um, right. I know that the Wander Franco extension, I have to put it as an outlier because of the type of money slash talent that is involved with Wander Franco. So if you look at the kind of deals that they had been making in the past, it was the Blake Snell deal. Okay, Brendan Lau deal. And then it had kind of, okay, well, who's next? Who's next? Right. And then it turns out to be Jeffrey Springs. Good good for him. Now, we were talking about uh, on a past mailbag episode, I said that this rotation um, could fight the 2012 for best ever in franchise history. And if you, by the way, if you don't think that the 2012 rotation um was the best one in franchise history you're wrong 
but tell me how you are wrong in the comments on the YouTube section after you hit the yeah. like and subscribe button. Um, but regardless of that little uh, tangent, I'm asking you a question. How does this contract change or does it change anything at all for how you rate one through five? Because when we had this talk, I said Drew Rasmussen third, Springs fifth, Zach e Eflin fourth, but you wanted to put Zach Eflin third. Does this contract kind of make you think that the hierarchy has changed one through five, even though we know the hierarchy one through five really right. doesn't matter except for the playoffs and then the first five games of the season? Yeah, I would still, again, I'd have to go back and I'm probably butchering what I said weeks or month ago, whatever it may be, but Glass now McClanahan, I mean, you can reverse those if you want. Number three, I'd still put Eflin for Jeffrey Springs now and fifth, Drew Rasmussen, which brings up an interesting point because I wonder if this deal was floated to Drew Rasmussen first or Shane McClanahan first. Like, did the Rays just move on down the line of of guys that they had had discussions on contract extensions with? Because, I mean, we and not to say that Jeffrey Springs isn't deserving of this, but there's several other guys that we would have probably highlighted first as contract extension candidates before for Jeffrey Springs, just based on the track record and some of the risk involved and so forth. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, you know, we heard uh, many times about the Willie Adamas. Who are is are there contract extension talks with Adamas? Are there contract extension talks with Austin Meadows? Um, yeah. So it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me to to know that. Oh, they floated this, not exactly this money, but something similar to McClanahan, probably higher, and yeah. Drew Rasmussen probably around the same, maybe even a little bit higher. But the problem with Rasmussen, which we've detailed here, is the two Tommy Johns might kind of scare the Rays, even though they pursued him multiple times. Um, so it's kind of an incongruence there to say that because they, they they drafted him first, then I kept they kept asking for him until they finally got him uh, with the Brewers. But I, I think this is a terrific deal from both sides. It's a win-win. Uh, for oh, Springs yeah. and 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 the race, definitely it, it it cements the rotation even a little bit more. McClanahan is under is is under um, he's even, he's even pre arb right now, so that, that's a lot of team control left. Glass now we know he's got two years, including this one, um, including this one he's got two. Um, then Rasmussen is under team control as well. Uh, he, he's actually even pre arb as well as McClanahan. I mean, yeah, and then Zach Evelyn for three. Like, if everything goes well, at least the rotation should be intact through 2024, right? That's that's yeah. pretty cool. No, and, it, and it's really smart again, both sides. I think it's a win win for both sides. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey Springs, he gets to free agency, but again, anything can happen as a pitcher, and, and based on his checkered past, of I mean, you've been DFA'd three times and you know, where you're coming from, those situations where you basically have at a minimum $31 million thrown in your face. There, there's no way you can say no to that. Absolutely not. Even after the season that you had this past season. So it's sort of like the, the Brandon Lau effect of, you know, drafted out of college and he, you know, with the tibia or whatever issue that he yeah. was like, there, there was risk involved. And then he gets his first taste of major league action. It's like, okay, they're, they're giving me millions of dollars right off the bat. All right, I'll go ahead and take it. So um, I, I think it's, it's great for both sides. Now, what about you? Where is, does your hierarchy or the rotation setup change with this Jeffrey Springs contract extension, or just more or less cements the fact that he might have uh, a longer stay than some of these other guys? I think the latter is definitely correct. I think Jeffrey Springs could definitely be a part of this rotation, you know, through maybe the guaranteed contract. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, if if he keeps what he did in 2022, this is going to be one of the biggest bargains ever for the race, at least for the guaranteed money, the 31 mil. I mean, this is just, yes, 100% of the way. Oh, yeah. As um, as far as the one through five, I do not think it changes my opinion. I still do put, I just, I like Rasmus and stuff better than springs even though uh that's but again 
that's not a knock on springs and I, and I hate that we live in a world where because we like something we people automatically automatically think that you're crapping on the other option like no you, you can also you can like both things but one you just like the best I like yeah. Drew Rasmussen's stuff. I like his demeanor. I I I just he's a throwback to me. Uh, Drew Rasmussen, the, the, that that bulldog James Shields mentality. That's Drew Rasmussen, and I like that. That's Alex Cobb right there. It it, it throws me back. Um, so I would still put Drew Rasmussen uh, Drew Rasmussen third at half springs fourth. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm still putting Zach Eflin fifth. I don't care if he's a free agent and he got the biggest free agent contract and i mean he like stuff wise results wise he's the fifth guy i i just i i i i have to see him be better before we can yeah put him above springs and rasmussen right that's fair yeah i mean at the end of the day i don't really care like it's you know you got five five dogs that you can throw out there and it, it should work itself out regardless now you yeah. know um I heard Mark Topkin say this um, on WDA today. He said uh, it wouldn't be smart. Oh, he actually for... came out of the rabbit hole. I bet he's been on vacation for like the the last three months. It would be nice to take a three month vacation. That that yeah. good for you, Mark. He's got like a, he's got the schedule of a teacher. Evidently, that's pretty cool. <laughs> good for you, Mark. We all want that. Um, yeah, uh, he said. Uh, wouldn't it be smart for the race to make their acquisition look better if they slot Zach Eflin fifth and he's going against other fifth starters? Oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so you know he gets a a better um, better look, better chance of winning those games. I mean, it might be kind of smart for the race to do that for their free agent, agent acquisition if they're not planning on keeping him at least for the third year, which goes to eighteen mil. So I don't know right. that. I thought that 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 kind of. Um, uh, made me smile cheeky yeah. cheeky topkin question uh yeah. out of the rotation one through five as of today which of those five guys is with the franchise the longest like who will you know three four five years from now still be with the organization springs efflin mcclanahan resmus and glass now because we know how the rays work and operate I legitimately could see it being Jeffrey Springs that sticks around just based yeah. on the contract. I mean, again, there's the higher profile you are, the more opportunity to maybe cash in on some trade chips and, you know, the more expensive a guy gets like question was Jake Odorizzi ever number one with the Rays? I can't recall. No, nah, I mean, I, he played, and you if know, he six, was, seven it, it was in like, a raised uniform, you know, he was, yeah, he was, right. he was there. He was available. He was like, he was a two I guy. See, he was a I two guy. See, yeah. I could see Jeffrey Springs being that perennial number three guy, like every year spring training for the next three, four five years. Uh, it's like, okay. Yeah. He's, he's Wait, part of this team. Does the question is the question, uh, as like, who's going to be in the team longest total or longest from now from, on from to, from today onward okay who's yeah i think to, i think who, who's the I last think, man standing out of this five with the i race? think it, it i i don't think it would be a bad bet to make on FanDuel uh yeah. to say that it would be springs but it depends if i i've always said this and i will continue to say it shane mcclanahan has the 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 pro the projected path of David Price, which is I'm gonna make my money. Oh, that Talk I think that's lawyer. that's kind of his hard line, and that's probably why the Rays moved off of him because they could have allocated those dollars and then some to Shane McClanahan. But I don't think he's playing ball with the Rays. He's no, he's gonna McClane play like, the string until free agency hits. Yeah. Oh, or he's just like, okay, if you trade me, fine, but I am not signing yeah. here. I am yeah. moving. So that's that's no, my take on Shane McClanahan. Like I've yeah. and I'm not going to change that until I see ink on paper. Yeah. And those arbitration fights could could get really uh interesting at some point. Because again, it's two different levels. Like Shane McClanahan was like ever since he was drafted as a what a, a comp pick or second rounder, he was fighting over money. He always thought he should have been paid more, which I don't disagree with, but like he he wants to get his. Like that's kind of where he's at and and 
you hope for his sake that nothing major happens as far as the injury or production realm. What, well, no, I have two questions for you. Number okay. one, if he does uh, get injured, I mean, doesn't he just have to look at Syndergaard making $22 million for a year from the uh, the, the Angels to be like, oh, okay, I don't have to that's be, true. be worried. That's true, yes. It is a, that's also, it's a different market for starting pitchers nowadays. Like, you could you can be a really a, a, just an innings eater, you know, sub, barely sub five ERA guy, and you're getting $12 million. You're basically getting what, like, Jeffrey Springs will get in year three and four of the deal. Yeah, and 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 the second question is, I mean, Shane McClanahan, wouldn't it be kind of silly for the race to go to arbitration with the guy that was already a Cy Young contender in his like second full year? Like, right. I, I, it would seem it would seem as silly to me as how I criticize the Yankees going to arbitration with Aaron Judge. Like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. But again, this is a team that pay the money. You know, but yeah, this team was going to arbitration with seven guys now six because they've agreed to a deal yeah. with Jeffrey Springs. So, yeah. um, you know, they're going to I think it could come to a, a, a situation where they'd fight over a, a million to three million dollars, whatever it may be. Now, question, do the Rays sign another player to a contract extension shorter long term before the conclusion of uh the off season or going or sometime during spring training whatever it may be or is this they're basically donezo after this like is this I, this is their hitter signing right like they're not signing a hitter after this i First would all, be, it's very i mean we talked about slim pickings like weeks and weeks ago like now it's just uh you know it's arid desert there's nothing I mean, you know you got yuli guriel josh harrison David Peralta, Luke Voigt, which I, you know, still wouldn't hate. Uh, Robbie Grossman, Odabel Herrera, Fran Mel Reyes, and Tyler Naquin. Like that's those are basically the options you're fighting with, free agency wise. It would be very surprising to me to see another Rays uh, extension, a hundred percent, because now you're looking at 2024, and the commitments for 2024. Are getting up there. I think they're up to mm -hmm. now 16 mil for 2024. Uh, yeah. So that's a team that already has that much money committed. So no, I would say no. And I love that you that you mentioned uh, the hitter thing because it's not a desert. It's the next thing after a desert. I don't know what's drier yeah. than the desert, but that's what it is right now. And you know, the Rays had their shot, and you can't tell me that there weren't options. There were multiple. I am not even going to say the names because we set them for two and a half months. Right. So if you want the names, go back in the archives, people on YouTube. There's a playlist for all of the videos. Well, I think we know what's happening. They're they're betting on pitching and they're betting on their injured guys and young guys to step up. And I know I, I read the article where I guess Topkin is getting back to work because I did read a couple of articles of his, but he, yeah. he quoted Neander of like, hey, we don't, and I think this was a really smart quote from Neander. One, he said, there's no deadlines on improving the team. Okay, I get that. Uh, sure. Two, um, you don't want to sign one. Uh, you don't want to sign, say, Robbie Grossman and block the path or potential of Jonathan Aranda. Like, what are we doing here at that point? But, but this is the thing, though, Kevin. This is the thing. That quote is so misleading because... Robbie Grossman wasn't the top A choice for any race fan. Yeah. Out there. You, I mean, it, it's it and I think the majority of race fans would completely agree with that sentiment because we would rather just see the young guys. Heck, I would even would like to see Kyle Manzardo, even though he's only been a double A, I would I would rather see Manzardo play than Robbie Grossman. A thousand percent. So that's just a misleading yeah. quote by Mr. Neander. Um because there were multiple options before or it could and have yes. been i mean i look i'm journalism 101 i'll just go back here it maybe it wasn't a misleading quote maybe where it was placed in the article in the context of how he said it and when he said it and where he said it sure um you know it wouldn't be the first time a journalist gerrymandered something to make it not seem as so so you know i'd actually have to you know steal uh topkins uh cam or recorder and, and kind of find out there but yes like i think that 
uh, according to the article I read, they they tried hard to go after the Michael yeah. Brantleys and the Sean Murphys and guys of that ilk, which you know they failed. But now you're at a point where does it really make sense to sign David Peralta and and block the pathway of a younger player? It does not make sense. I think all race fans agree with that, or at least most race fans should agree with that sentiment. The issue is that that was not the the starting point. And again, like right. we've said multiple times, takes two to tango. If Brenly doesn't want to come to play in St. Pete in front of 5,000 people on a Tuesday, he's going to take less money to just go play at, at Houston. Like, it, that's yes. just, I mean, why would we fault the player for that? Uh, so the race tried. Either they failed because of who they are or because of the lack of money or both. Yeah. You know, but one of those two did not uh, really call to the attention uh, of the free agent. But whatever. The past yeah. is the past. The problem is, is that I've, I've, I told you, the Rays are hoping for two things. And now, after this Neander, new quotes of Neander by the Topkin article, now we know that I was right about the two things that the Rays are hoping for. Hoping. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Sneak peek. Hoping and wishing. Yeah. They're hoping that they don't get bugged down by the injuries and they're wishing that some, you know, some prospects, some some guys that did not provide a lot of offensive thump are going to do so in 2023. So right. wishing and hoping was the free agent acquisition for the lineup. Wishing and hoping. Not great. Now, great, question Bob. real quick before we I mean, I don't want to diverge too much here, but so Michael Brantley, of course, stays with the Houston Astros. Again, there's familiarity there. I'm not I can't even recall what the, the deal was off the top of 10. my head. I think it was 10, 10 or 10, 10 to million, 12. 10 to 12. 12 for. OK, say it's 12 for one year. Sure. We could be way off on that. Um, I know. How much higher do you go if you're the Rays to bring him to St. Petersburg? 17, 16, 15? Like the opportunity cost. Like where 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 does it, it, that uh you know, where, where's that line drawn more or less? I'll tell you this. He agreed for $12 million for 2023, but it also includes $4 million in incentives depending okay. on plate appearances. So it could up to be up to 16 mil. Maybe the Rays were only willing to go to 13. And the, or maybe they were willing to go to 16 or 18. And then he's like, nah, fam, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'll go to Houston. We don't know. And unless somebody from the front office who we know, they listen to the pod and watch the pod. Hey, come on the show. Tell us what happened. Um, you're always yeah. welcome here. You're always welcome. The door is always open. Um, but we don't know. We don't know if it was lack of money or just the interest wasn't there. But there were many players, Kevin. So that's why I, I read that yeah. quote about that Robbie Grossman. It's like, yeah, no, duh. We would prefer any of the young guys. I would rather see John Aranda make 10 errors at second base in the first month of baseball because he's our guy. Like, I want yeah. to see the young guy than somebody blocking, you know, a vet blocking him 100%. But, like, that's right. not the point, my man. The point is for 24 innings or 25 innings, I don't even remember anymore. 25? Was 24. it 25? 24 innings they were basically blanked man and they came out him and kevin cash saying if we stand pat that would be irresponsible stood pat. I, you just took pat baby yeah. pat benatar basically i mean pat benatar in the in the building pat benatar sure. had more hits over the course in of this the lineup running. yeah basically. in this lineup Pat Benatar is is the acquisition for the race. By the way, I think Pat Benatar actually was one of those Tropicana summer concerts. I think so. Uh, highly underrated, by the way. I like Scott Rowland, just underrated yes. in my opinion. She's got oh. some bangers, not going to lie. <laughs> she uh, does have some bangers. Yes, she, she does. She really does. I'm not... Yeah. I'm, <laughs> like, at least a half a dozen bangers, which, you know, in, in today's music, you get it's a lot of one-hit wonders. Yes, hundred uh, percent rappers and so forth. But uh, yeah, so before we uh, move along here, we'll get to some comments from the listenership out there on what they think about the Jeffrey Springs contract extension. We put that out on Twitter. 
Fill in the blank. Zach Dab says exquisite. R Hill says a good move. Yandi next. Interesting. Don't think that would happen, but if there was a contract extension candidate, I suppose that could make some sense. Um, Brian Stark says what they should have done with Shane McClanahan before 2022. Okay. Uh, Dustin Payne says good. Now let's get a bat. Probably won't happen. Caleb says good. My main complaint has always been that the Rays don't reward their players. This is a good sign. Brian Kim exciting that we may not have gotten any of the free agents, but it's amazing. We spent money. I hope we get a bat, but maybe this, We'll get some free agents to sign. Hope we get bats soon. Uh, Drunk Kalorn, great Twitter name. Uh, At Rays of Our Lives is actually the handle, but Drunk Kalorn is the uh, name there. Fine, but can he hit question mark? Uh, Probably not. And then uh, Chris Snyder says awesome. So a lot of positivity about the Rays doling out money, but again, the common theme is uh bats 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 and you cannot fault the fandom for wanting bats a because by every metric it was mediocre at best in the whole 2022 season and number two you come out the big guns neander and cash saying we cannot stand pat we're gonna get a bat look at that Dr. Seuss rhyme yeah. at 11.20 p.m., people. We're staying late like because, of, over here. because we need... Exactly. We, we need to stay late to talk about this. Um, it's You can't fault the fandom. You said it, that you're looking for a bat. So you already grew our expectations. We're getting a bat. And you got how many bats? This many. Zero. Zero, for those of you that are not on YouTube. And I don't know why you're not on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Help us get to 600. We're so close, people. We're at 586. Yeah. Come on, hit that subscribe button. It's free, baby. It's free. Mm -hmm. And uh, those that listen on the traditional podcast, uh, part three of the Mason Hour interview will drop on Friday. This, of course, is dropping on Thursday. Uh, Before we log off here, uh, the Rays, actually, I'm not even going to say this. Um, Hmm. If you had to ballpark how many runs per game the Rays will average in 2023, what would you put that marker at? Okay, so the Rays in 2021 were about 5.2. The Rays in 2022 were about 4.2. I mean, hoping and wish. Okay, let me let me put my Neander thinking cap. Mm, I'm hoping and wishing for more health. And I'm hoping and wishing for Aranda and Josh Lowe and Paredes and 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 taylor walls and bruhan to just do great things 4.5 okay so you're more optimistic than what the rays outputted in 2022 or was 4.07 four point zero seven. okay then let's drop that let's drop that nope nope i didn't say anything then probably like 4.3 4.4 okay yeah, I thought you were gonna go real negative, Nancy. Like, uh, no, again, what was my what was my introductory thing? Yeah, my Eric Neander thinking cap. That's what I think they're thinking. I mean, hoping and wishing that they're all healthy. Hoping and wishing that there's some breakthroughs in the in the, in the young guys. Hoping and wishing, baby. Hoping and wishing. That's the motto of 2023. Hoping no malice and wishing. I have I have no malice towards uh, Andrew Brian Ald. If hiring, let me know. Uh, I I love the Rays organization. Uh-huh. You need a communications wizard, anyway. Yeah. So, um, no, no, you know what? I, they, they 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 always are into diversity. So I you know I I I fit that mold. And you know you you don't always want a yes man, uh, Brian Ald. You don't always want a yes man, Eric Neander. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Boom. That's my resume. To That's you. fair. Yeah, very good. All right. Uh, thank you for making the Locker Room Podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB Prospects Podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you on Friday with part three of the Mason Hour interview.